What we're looking at is, is cross choking with the hands and you'll see why it does and doesn't work um, due to the mechanics and physiology of what I'm doing. The, the palms are going to be up, so from old Jiu Jitsu terms we're looking at Gayaku. And this essentially must be understood that it's not a hanging strangle, it's a hand strangle. So we're doing it really without involvement of the hips, it's the position of the hands itself and the physiology and the mechanics within the wrists and the hand structure which is strangling them unconscious. And if we don't do that part of it correctly, um, the defences he can apply will shut us down. So if we look at what we're going to do, and it's best to start on your knees, uh, this is how I've shown it, so you can understand how to develop your hand position. So they can actually see, when I'll talk now as well, you can see that the, what my hands are like, and the thickening of the joints will come in time as you do this, because your hands will adapt to what you're doing, so you'll create the same. This will come. You can see what's happening here again, look. This is the action we want. And the same on the other hand. It must be. This is the twist that I want. Which is because then when you pull as well, I mean, his, his head's going to come off. So what happens now is if we look at it in a, a specific position, like between the legs or the guard position, you can see that the problem we have with just applying a pull when the hands aren't correct is that even though I might be in correct position with my hands, he can do one of two basic defences. If Even though I'm in completely here, my hands are touching the back, if Ollie pushes off my, my stomach with both his hands like posture, and I pull him out. There's no way he's going to go to sleep. I can pull like hell, and he won't go. And same again if he brings his arms over mine and crunches them in. So if I do this again, and I'm in really deep, but he brings his arms over. There's no way I can pull like hell, and I'm not going to. It might annoy you, but he's not going to die. And I've got to pull him out. That's, that's my aim. Whereas if my hands are in position correctly, so in they go. The second angle's underneath. I make sure I have position to lift the wrists up and the little finger to my face and now I twist the hands. Now if he pushes my chest now or my stomach, he's still going to tap. If he collapses over my arms and pulls, he's still going to tap. It makes no difference because the hands are in position. So I hope everybody can understand what's going on there. This is important. We're looking at the detail also of how to put the second hand in if you come from the top there. Because he might be close to me, like this. To play this second hand inside here is difficult. We can punch this, thank you Carlos for this, this hand up, which will always move his head up away and loosen the, the, the jacket at the back. It's hard to flip your hand this way, just punch it up and then we can go in. Because now I can turn the hands and that's it. I can feel it. Bang. Yeah. And any defense or a push or a clamp won't be sufficient because it's too deep inside. It's like trying to get a garrot off. You couldn't get anything inside there. Um, because if your hands aren't in the right place, his pressure of push and clamp will be immense. Because we've got to remember that. Effectively, I'm running for my dinner and he's running for his life, so he'll, he'll push out and I'm going to pull. He really will. So the hands have to be right. Thanks, Nick. No belt.